Hey everyone, so as many of you already know, besides fishing in uh, British Columbia, Canada, I spend quite a bit of time fishing in Denmark as well, uh, just because my in-laws live over here, and we do spend several times um, every year uh, in this country. Uh, we're outside of Copenhagen today, fishing in a tiny little swamp like this. So a swamp like this, it's kind of like a little mud puddle, but the ecology can be quite complex. So on the bottom of the food chain, you have your different middle species like bleak and like roach and rudd and uh, then you also have your grape, the big grazers like different species of the carp that just go along the bottom stirring up the bottom and creates all kinds of vegetation for the insects and uh, going up the food chain you have your uh, northern pike that many of you already know and also your european perch now the european perch are very similar to a yellow perch um, but they can get very, very big. Um, I've caught them up to three or four pounds. But uh, in a small system like this, uh, we're not expecting to catch any big fish because the amount of feed is not very much and so they don't grow very big. Most of the fish that we expect to see are roughly around one or two pounds. Uh, the perch, well, maybe most likely under one pound. So we have a little bit of time today fishing in the slightly rainy weather and uh, hopefully we can show you a perch or pike and uh, stay tuned. Ooh. I think I'll just bought him. Because the fish we're trying to catch are not expected to be very big. Uh, these pike and perch are generally between uh, one pound and two pound would be a pretty generous estimate. Uh, we're using a pretty light tackle here. So I got my, I brought my ultra light spinning rod and reel and uh, just fitted with four pound test line and the lure I'm using is uh, one sixteenth ounce and one eighth ounce. Oh, I just saw a fish rising there. And lure is light, not just because the fish we're catching are small, but also, as you can see, there's quite a bit of weed around. Um, the water is fairly shallow. It's filled with weed. We're fishing towards the end of summer. So this lake, this swamp here, um, has been overgrown with um, lots of weed on the bottom. So a light lure that travels closer to the water surface um, it's more um, ideal for the situation here. And I got a nice little tangle, as you can see. There we go. Let's make another cast. I've been seeing the odd fish rolling around and you can see lots of little bait fish kind of kind of just jumping out of the water as if they're being chased. So that's that's always always a pretty good sign. And more weed. There you go. Oh. With the barber's hook, the weed and a single barber's hook, um, instead sort of like a treble bark hook, um, the, the weed can be shaken off pretty easily. And the water is quite calm today, it's not very windy, unlike most days here in Denmark. Uh, I just kind of wish the rain would stop. Oh! There's a fish. I think it's a pike. Yeah, it's a pike for sure. Just a little guy. It's a cute little pike. There you go, so that's this is one of those 
tiny pikes that you can find in a swamp like this. There's a pretty little fish and uh, this is just a little juvenile and these guys can grow up to um, I don't know, 5, 10 pounds or even bigger uh, depending on how big the system is but for a small lake like this, they don't grow very big Yeah, that's a fish. That was a really hard hit. And what do we have? We have a little perch. <laughs> little guy. So this is a European perch, which is very similar to a yellow perch. The two are pretty much identical um, when you look at the outside, but the only difference is the genetics. Um, so one lives, these ones live on one side of the Atlantic while the yellow perch is on the other side in North America. Um, they're also called red things um, because you can see the things are quite red. And uh, when I grew up in Australia, I used to catch these as well. And uh, over here, this is just a tiny one, but they can actually get really big. They can get a couple pounds or even three, four pounds um, in the estuary. So in a lake like this, a small one, a small fish like this is pretty typical. But beautiful fish. Look at the uh, tiny, the, the spines as well, and that's very uh, that's a signature uh, characteristic on these perch. So let's let this little guy go. It goes, <laughs> so it can grow bigger, and we'll catch again next year. Okay, so that last perch came from over there. Um, there's a whole bunch of weeds um, right at the edge and I'm just casting right to the edge of the weeds and and I've, I've caught perch a little bit before that's why I kind of knew um, I should be casting over there so I'm gonna keep trying that there might be a school and just hang out there and see if we can get another one and of course if you cast too close to the weeds you'll end up catching weeds <laughs> Like that. Let's get this off and try that again. Oh, there's another one. That is a cantail. It fights like a pike, and it's a pike. Ah. It's a, another little pike. There you go. So that last perch actually pulled the line really hard whereas the, the two pikes I got today they just kind of drag it feels like a long heavy drag um, when I hooked it it's kind of interesting hook right at the edge of the mouth and you can I don't want to touch that jaw too much it's just full of teeth <laughs> another little pike
So this is starting to get a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we got two pikes and one perch so far. Um, the rain has stopped, the, the sun is shining now. I'm seeing quite a bit of feeding action going on. There's quite a, quite a bit of little bait fish just scrambling, like jumping out of the water. And every now and then you see this big splash, big, uh, well not big pike, small pike thrashing around, catching those bait fish. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, before we fished down there and um, didn't get anything, and once we moved over here, there's a, there was actually a pike um, jumping out right where I was casting before. So we might go back there and try it again. But this spot seems to be pretty productive. Um, it's where we've been catching all the fish so far. So that's a greedy little guy. Um, this is one of those bait fish that you can find in this pond. And for some reason he grabbed the spinner. <laughs> Look at the size of the spinner compared to the, to the fish. We're gonna get this guy back in the water. Oh! 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 That was interesting. That's a little, that's a perch. <laughs> Not too sure if you saw it on camera, but I was really lean and I just saw this V uh, on the surface right behind it. And this is a pretty nice perch actually. Bigger than the other one I got. You can see, look at this um, dorsal spine. just beautifully um, expanded right now. Yeah, this fish, um, I really didn't expect that. It was swimming right behind the spinner and, and I just slowed it down and he grabbed it. Here they go. Beautiful. <laughs> well, we had a pretty wet start today, um, but the weather cleared up at the end. So we ended up having a fairly lovely uh, Danish late summer here. Uh, it went alright today, but we caught a couple of pike and a couple of perch as well. Um, the fish aren't very big, but the highlight of the day was definitely that big perch that came out from nowhere and grabbed the lure on the surface. Uh, so it was very, very exciting to see that. Even though the fish aren't very big, they're all around one pound or less. I think it's pretty interesting to fish in a small system like this with the ultralight tackle. Um, we came somewhat unprepared. Um, all I packed for this trip was an ultralight spinning rod and reel and a box of lure, um, lures such as spinners and spoons. What I really wanted to have was um, some top water bait as well, some soft plastic so we can try out different methods. Um, the challenge today was the, the, the overgrowing weeds in the water, so some, a top water lure that skipped across the shallow water where the weeds are might have made a difference. But it was, I was pretty satisfied with a few fish being caught. Um, we'll be be back in um, Canada in a few weeks from now, so stay tuned for more BC fishing videos. And uh, if you need more fishing information, please go to our website at fishingwithrod.com. Um, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, leave a comment if you have any questions about fishing BC or even fishing Denmark. I'm always happy to answer them. So until next time, good luck fishing.